Hello and welcome to this Swift UI tutorial. I'm Cal and today we're going to be building a to-do list app using Core Data. The benefits of using Core Data are that when you close the app and you reopen it, all of your information is remembered and we're going to be using lists. We're going to have an ability to create a new task item. We're going to be able to delete it. We're going to be able to edit one that we've already created. We're actually going to use the same component for our create and our edit. If you are looking for a video to really get the fundamentals of Core Data and SwiftUI down pat, then stick around. Before we get started on today's tutorial, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've been approached by Editor's Keys. They asked me to test out their new Xcode keyboard cover, which is just a silicon cover that goes on top of your laptop and it has all of the different Xcode shortcuts. All the important keys like Command and Option and Control are clearly colored and on each key there is the shortcut with the combination of colors that you need to hold down to activate the shortcut. Just having those shortcuts really quickly available has been a really nice way to learn some new things about Xcode. I mean, there's a few things I didn't even know that you could do. As well, there are a few shortcuts that I knew existed, but I could never really quite take the time to learn all the different key combinations. And with the skin, I just quickly have a look. And then before you know it, that shortcut is integrated into your workflow and it becomes second nature. The skin is nice and hygienic too. You can just whip it off and hand wash it. So if you're interested in checking out one of these Xcode covers, there is an affiliate link in the description below, or you can use the code word code with Cal on checkout to receive 10% off your order as well as supporting the channel. And yeah, with all that said, let's get back into the tutorial. Cool, so we're gonna create a new Xcode project, iOS app product name, we're gonna call it to-do list app tutorial. We can see at the bottom, I've already got use core data ticked, but if you don't, you just wanna make sure that that's selected and host in iCloud kit. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I'm just gonna select okay and hit next and finish. I'm gonna make the window just a little bigger. Straight out of the box, if we build and run this, uh, when you check core data, you actually have a working app with the ability to add a timestamp. You can go into an edit mode and delete, or you can swipe right to delete, which is pretty cool. Really, we're just gonna start by building on what they've got here already. And as we are building a to-do list app, probably the first thing to do is to model our data. On the left pane here, we're just going to go into the file, which is ending in XC data model ID. We're gonna change our entity from item to task item. So this is gonna be like a to-do list item. We're gonna change the original date to be completed date, which is of type date. We're gonna add another field created, which is a date type. And I'm just going to create also name, which is of a type string. You can see I'm just hitting this little plus icon to add a new attribute to our object. A description string, we want a due date as well. That's gonna be a type date. And we're gonna add a Boolean, which is whether or not we schedule a specific time. So this is say you had to water the garden at say 7 p.m. Or if you just wanted to say, I wanna water the garden at some stage today, we're gonna to allow for both kinds of to-do items. Cool, so that's it for our modeling. We don't have to do any getters or setters. We, we just leave that object as it is. And we're actually gonna head into our persistence file. And I'm just gonna remove this uh, for loop because that is going to be a bit annoying for our preview. Then we're gonna head into our content view and I'm gonna refactor it to be our task list view just because that's a bit more of an informative name. We can see our, this is the fetch request where it's getting all of the items that it needs to display. And because we've changed our entity name, we need to change it from item to task item. Our entity no longer has a attribute called timestamp. So I'm just replacing that with due date for now. This is more of a plus holder. We'll probably come back and fix this later. We're just going to remove this uh, if iOS. We're gonna remove the add item function because we're gonna create our own version of this shortly. We're going to change the item text to be our due date instead of just the timestamp. And we're gonna remove this toolbar item and this final text here. And if we build and run this, we should be able to see that we haven't completely broken everything and it's now working with our updated entity name. Cool, so the first thing we're gonna to need to be able to do is add a new to-do list item. So I'm gonna create a new Swift UI view. I'm gonna call it floating button. And this is gonna be our new item button. I'm gonna add in a spacer and then a hstack. Inside the hstack, we're gonna add a navigation link. And a navigation link has a destination as well as what we want it to look like. The destination, we're gonna create a new group and a new Swift UI view, which we're gonna call task edit view. And I'm just gonna rename this group to be views and just get everything a little bit organized. So putting all our views in our views. Cool, so our destination for our navigation link is gonna be our task edit view. And we're gonna put our text inside the navigation view. Uh, the text, we're gonna say new task. 
and then we're gonna give it a font of headline. Our navigation link, we're gonna give some padding and let's open up the preview so we can see what's going on. You can see that's just a little bit of padding there for our navigation link. Then we're gonna give it a foreground color of white. Background color is going to be our accent color. We're gonna give it a quarter radius of 15, uh, maybe make that 30. And then we're also gonna give it padding of 30. Shadow, we're gonna give it black. Uh, opacity of 0.3, so really gray. And then our radius, we're gonna give it three, as well as our X and Y. And you can see that's just given it a little bit of a 3D effect. Cool, so now back in our task list view, gonna do just a little bit of tidying up. And we've already got a navigation link here, but we're gonna give it a destination of our task edit view. And we're gonna remove the label from the bottom and just use a pretty simple text with our due date for the content of that navigation link. We're gonna put our list inside a VStack and then inside our VStack, we're gonna add a Z stack. So Z stack is layering. And then we're gonna do the floating button after our list. So it's gonna sit on top of our list. And we're also just gonna give our navigation view a title. So to-do list. Cool, so let's build and run and see what we've got. So we've got our new task button. And if we click on it, it takes us to a new view, which at the moment just says, hello world, but that's where we're gonna be creating our new task. Cool, so we can head into our task edit view now. I'm gonna bring up the preview and then we're going to remove the text and type form. Inside our form, we're going to have a section and the header, we're going to give the text of task. And so in this part of the section, we're gonna say text field, which is our task name and the text, we wanna give it a state variable of string. So I'm just gonna to go to the top and type state var, selected task item. And so this is where we're also gonna be passing through a task item because we're gonna be using this for edit. So that's gonna be optional. And then we're gonna create that name that we're gonna use for our task name as well as a description. And now in our text field, we can give it the binding reference of our name. We can copy down the text field because we also wanna have a description text field. And we're just going to use the text as our description binding. We're gonna give the task edit view preview a new task item because it's complaining about that. And then we're also going to override the init function. So we're going to have a past task item, which is gonna be optional as well as an initial date. In the future, we're going to be passing it through, you know, if you're making a to-do list item for the future, you don't wanna be scrolling through the date picker. So that's why we've got an initial date. And then we're gonna say, if let task item is equal to our past task item, meaning that there is a task item passed through, meaning we're in edit mode. Then we're gonna set name equal to the task item name, so the original name. Otherwise, we're gonna assume that you're creating a new task and therefore set our name equal to empty. So we're gonna to need to do the same thing for all of our other fields. So we're gonna need one for description as well. So either we're in edit mode and therefore we need to set the initial value of our description or we're in new mode where we just set it all to empty. We're also gonna set our selected task item to initial value of our task item. So that's again, if we're in our edit mode and not create new mode. And then we're gonna create two more variables, one called due date and the second one called schedule time. Schedule time was a boolean and due date was a date. And so we're gonna to need to create both of that logic. We're gonna need a description as well as due date and task item due date. And if it's not that, we're going to use the initial date. And then for our schedule time, we're just gonna say task item dot schedule time. And if it's a new, we're just going to set our due date to the initial date and schedule time to be false by default. We're gonna pass our preview just uh, today's date. And so we already have a section which takes our task name and the description, but we're gonna create one for our due date. Just renaming the section header. We're gonna actually call this first text field schedule time, and we're gonna change it from a text field to a toggle button. And the is on is gonna be our schedule time. Below the toggle, we're gonna to add in a date picker. Date picker is gonna have the name of due date and the selection is gonna be our due date. Below that, we need to add in one more section, which is gonna be our save button. And so we're just gonna have a button in here, which is called save, and we're gonna give it an action, save action. Let's create that save action below. We're gonna give it a font of headline, as well as a frame of max width infinity and alignment center. So just put the save button in the middle of the section. And we also need to, for our date picker, we're gonna give it display components. So we're gonna create a function called display comps. This is gonna return date picker components. So if we have the schedule time on, we want to have our date picker be able to select date and time. And if our schedule time is off, then we just wanna select a date and not worry about the time. 
Cool, and the final thing left to do is flesh out our save action. We're gonna say with animation, if our selected task item is nil, meaning that we're in new task item mode, then we're gonna create a new task item and just assign that to our selected task item. And this requires a context, so we're just gonna copy that out of our task list view, our view context, and now we can pass that in for our task item because we're creating a new core data item. And now below that, we can say set our selected task item created date to today's date or the exact timestamp. We want to set our selected task item name equal to the state variable name. And we need to do the same thing for our due date as well as our scheduled time. Setting the entity attribute value to the state variable value. And we actually, if we head into our task list view, all we need to do now is call this view context save. But we're going to do a bit of hard work to make this a bit more reusable because we don't want to just copy paste that in, it'd probably be easier. But what we're going to do is right click, refactor and extract to method. We're going to call this method save context and our save context takes a variable of context, which is of type NS managed object context and just changing the save from view context to the context that gets passed through and removing the file private. And then we're going to right click on our shared folder and create a new Swift file calling it date holder. And our date holder class is an observable object. And we're going to pass this through to all of our different views. And that way we can put our save context function inside here and have it easily accessed. So we just need to import core data as well because that needs NS managed object context. And so now if we head into our to-do list app.swift, we are going to say, let date holder and we're actually going to create our date holder here so that only happens once and our context is equal to persistence controller container view context and we can pass our date holder in that context and we're just going to override the init function in here to make it take uh, ns manage context um, that will come in handy a little bit later on and then we're also going to pass our task list view the environment object of our date holder now in our task list view we can declare that environment object just calling it date holder and we can also put that in our floating button as well as our task edit view. So we're gonna pass this date holder through each of our views. And we just do that by saying full stop, environment object and passing it through the date holder. And same thing for our navigation links, we need to put in both there as well as for our floating button. And the final thing left to do is our delete items because we've just moved that out. We can now reference it off our date holder and then we can copy that and head back into our task edit view. And because we've got our date holder, we are using the one piece of code, which will come in handy later in the tutorial, but is also just good practice. You don't want to be copy and pasting things unnecessarily. Cool, so in our task edit view, the last thing we want to do is pop our view. So we're going to say environment presentation mode var presentation mode, which is a binding of presentation mode. Basically, if we go presentation mode and then wrapped value dismiss, it will essentially go back in the navigation view. Cool, so I think we are ready to test out our new to-do list item. So I'm just gonna say new task. I'm gonna give the task a name and then hit our save button, which has put us back to our to-do list page. I'm gonna create another one, just calling this test item. And if we toggle our schedule time, you can see that we've now got a time picker as well as our date picker. And so if our schedule time toggle is on, we can choose a time and hit save. And you can see we haven't actually updated our cells or anything yet, but we do have two items. So we're pretty confident that the data is getting saved correctly. Cool, so if we head into our task list view now, we don't want this text here. We actually want to create a Swift UI view calling it task cell. And we're going to remove that text and just type in task cell. And our task cell is going to take our task item as well as our date holder. So we're just going to copy paste our date holder in as well. We're going to call our observable object. We're going to call this past task item and it's of type task item. And our preview is now requiring a task item. So we're just going to create a new one and I'm just getting a couple of errors here. So just fixing up that typo. And then if we head back into our task cell, we want to have a text with our task name. And if the task name is empty, we're just gonna do an empty string. We're gonna give it some padding, which is horizontal. And if we go and run this quickly, you can see that the two task item names that we created before are populated in our list. So next we're gonna add the ability to actually complete a to-do list item. We're gonna create a check mark style view. So we're gonna create a new SwiftUI view. I'm gonna call this checkbox view. 
and it's gonna need a date holder as well as a pass task item. And we're just gonna pass that through to our preview. In our task cell, we're gonna call our checkbox view and it's gonna require our past task item as well as our environment object, which is our date holder. And then, so inside here, we're going to create an image. Our image system name is going to be, if our past task item is completed date is not equal to nil, meaning that it doesn't have a completed date, then we're gonna use the check mark circle fill. Otherwise, we're gonna use just a circle, so an empty circle. And as we're gonna be referencing whether or not our task item has a completed date or not, it's probably worthwhile creating a convenience method for this. Because we are letting Core Data handle all of the getters and setters, we still have the ability to create our own custom functionality using the extension. So I'm gonna create a new group, uh, just calling this model, and I'm gonna put our persistence in there. And then I'm gonna create a new Swift file, which I'm gonna call task item extension. And so our task item extension, we're gonna import Swift UI. We're gonna type extension and then task item. So this task item now has access to all of our attributes. And we're gonna create a function in here, which is called is completed, which returns a Boolean. And it's basically what we've done here with our system name. And we're just gonna call, instead of that, we're gonna call completed and we're gonna return our completed date is not equal to nil, meaning that it is completed, our task item is completed because it has a completed date. And then we're gonna say if our foreground color, if our task item is completed, we're gonna give it green if it is, and secondary if it's not. And then we're gonna give it an on tap gesture, so on click with an animation, and we're gonna say if our task item is not completed, we're gonna give completed date a new date, so today's date, a timestamp. And then we're gonna call our date holder save context and we just need to grab view context from another view and pass that through to our saved context. Cool, so let's try out our check mark. Um, we can see I'm gonna click on our test item and it's changed our image from just the circle to the circle with a tick in it. And we can't actually see the completed date. So it might be nice to head into our task edit view and we're just gonna create uh, an if statement saying if selected task item is completed, we're gonna create a new section just calling completed. You don't have a completed date, then don't run this piece of code. Our section is just gonna have some text. It's gonna display our completed date formatted and the date we're gonna use the abbreviated style and time we're gonna do shortened. And if you don't have those things, we're just gonna return an empty string and the foreground color is green. So the text is green. And you can see if we go and run this, uh, we've got a timestamp there for when dishes were done. And if we create a new task item, we can see that there isn't any section with completed date, which is what we wanted. So that's good. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Just a quick summary of what we've learned today. We learned how to use core data with Swift UI. We created a to-do list app. We can add a task item, we can delete it. We can edit one that's already created. We can set mark it as completed. Yeah, that's a very basic functioning to-do list. There will be a part two to this video. So check out the link in the description. If source code in the comments as always. If you found any value in this tutorial, consider giving the video a like as well as subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.